Welcome to the second Synchromotion devlog. Uh, I've called it Synchromotion because I feel like that's the intention that I had with my university project of the same name. Um, so this is kind of like an effort to one, get back to that, but also like pursue this area of music and visuals uh, in sync with one another. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of an update of what I've been doing and uh, yeah, show you all of the stuff that I've developed over the last week. Oh, hello, you come to join. Let's show you what I've been doing. Uh, here we go. So this is the Ableton project and I've kind of like decided on doing like a set of like two songs basically. Uh, and these are songs that I've sort of done recently, ones that I've been working on with the, the push, um, but kind of adapted a little bit. Uh, and what I've also done with this is I've kind of like prepped it for sending to visuals as well. There's a few extra things going on. So. On some of these channels, um, we've got like a little MIDI device here, which takes the MIDI notes and then sends those out uh, as OSC data, which I showed you before. Um, but then on some of them, so for instance, on the drums, it's okay, it's sending out on various channels, so I can use the snare and use the kick drum. But for something like the keys, um, where it's like different, uh, let's just turn that down a little bit different notes, uh, I don't necessarily want to be trying to capture all of the possible notes for a play. So what I've been doing is I've been taking that and sending it to another channel. Um, and then I'm just stripping those notes down. So it just basically puts them down and counts them as one note. So it just fires off this one note. And then that means that if I've got a module, I'm calling these modules, these graphics things that are built in Unreal, uh, it can just trigger that with every note that it plays. And then I know that everything from that channel, no matter what note it's playing on, will, will play on that note. Um, and that's just a simple Max for Live patch that I've made to, to strip it out. And then that again gets sent out via the same kind of MIDI to OSC thing. Um, so that's the kind of like note data. The other type of data is this kind of like envelope data, um, which could be anything really, but I'm mostly using it to follow these like envelopes. So here we go. It's this pad, so as you can see, as it like rises, it's following the envelope data and then we're sending that out. There's kind of this workaround where you have to send it to this like effects rack and then pick it up via this like OSC send thing. Uh, and then I can pick that up in Unreal so you can see what's going on in Unreal if I play this. Um, these these things at the top are kind of like going um, So I'll show you kind of behind the scenes of what's happening there in a minute. But you can see all the data coming in here. You can see all the various envelopes are sending stuff through uh, as we go. Um, what else is there? Let's just stop that a minute. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it that's being sent and I can mess around live with that and control the song and then that controls bits of the, the visuals. Um, I have set things up on this iPad here, which you can't see because Ninja's in the way. Come on, off you go. Um, so this will basically control various parameters of the um, Unreal project. It's still OSC. It's not actually going via um, Ableton at all. It's just sending pure like OSC data to Unreal. Um, but I thought it was helpful to use the same protocol because then I could link, link them both up if, if need be. Um, so let me just show you what's going on there. So if we play like a big bit of the song. What's going on here, and then I can like turn off things. So there's nothing on the screen now. Um, but if I want, I can bring in the swarm, I can bring in the like geometric stuff, which is like powered by the base, and then uh, have the yeah, other stuff as well. So I think the keys does this one. Then I play this one, yeah. So it kind of gives me a bit of independent control. So while a lot of stuff is being like triggered via the, um, like that's pausing. There we go. While a lot of stuff is just getting triggered by the notes, um, yeah, I can have independent control of of the graphics and say like what is firing when, um, as well as just trigger these individual ones like the ChatGPT story thing and the and the flyby. Um, so let me show you a few changes that I've made in Unreal. A lot of this is kind of like refactoring of stuff. Um, I wanted it to be kind of this dynamic system, not necessarily because it needs to be particularly efficient uh, or anyone else is going to use it, but for me to develop it further and like build upon it, um, I kind of wanted to have a bit more of a sort of development approach. 
So I'll show you what that means. Um, each of these are like graphics modules. So uh, let's just show you what's going on here. Here we go. So like the beams, well, you're not going to see that because there's nothing going on, but um, like the swarm thing or the line yeah. thing, like all of these are what I call like a module, like a graphics module. Um, and there's various functionality that all of those are going to have. They're all going to be triggered by OSC. Um, they're all going to kind of be turned off and on by this thing. Um, and in Unreal, you do that via like parent classes. So if I go into like this one, this Swarm one, for example, um, and then I go to the base class that I've created, I can go into here. And then essentially all of the functionality that I want all of these modules to have, I can just change it in this base class. So I don't have to like go into each of the individual things. I want to change like how things trigger like across everything uh, or add some more functionality. All I have to do is go into here and then it'll be replicated across all of my other classes that, that pull from that. So for instance, I've got um, the allowed notes. Like this is set at the beginning. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute via data table. Um, the mode is set via that as well. And then the way that we bring in um, that we filter out the notes, that's just a, like a separate thing as well. So like if I update this, uh, it'll, it'll update across everywhere basically. Um, so a note on that, like instead of kind of setting all of these variables on each module, I have created a structure that does that. So each kind of module gets this structure, it gets its name, it has a mode, it has like the notes that it's going to accept, like if it's going to be triggered. Uh, and then this, this is just a note for myself is like things that it does nicely to let me know what I should sort of trigger it with um, at a later date, just from the type of like graphics that it is. Um, but here we have the data table. So all of the modules that I'm going to use, not necessarily all the ones I create, because there's a lot that I don't use, um, they get data. So black particles, it's being triggered by note 36, which is the bass drum. Uh, it's set to zero when it starts. Some of these are set to one because I want them to just be on and triggered, but I don't want the particles to come on at the beginning. Uh, but one like beams, for example, is set to one and uh, it's going to accept notes 100, which is on that um, MIDI send channel that I was using. Um, so then what I've done is inside of, uh, where is it? Yeah, game state. I'm using a game state, which kind of resets every time you launch the game or the, the app or whatever it is. Uh, and then this does a couple of things. Um, it kind of, uh, what does it do? Yeah, this handles like the node switching, the mode switching, sorry, of the modules, which means that I don't have to do it per module. Um, and it also handles this kind of like setting the mode at the beginning. Uh, as well as the allowed notes that it's going to have. So it means that I can use this data table, I can change the data table, and then whenever I boot the game up, or the, the app, or whatever you want to call it, it's like finding all of the little modules that are in the game and s telling them what notes they're going to accept. So it, it just means I can change that dynamically if I want to. Like, I could change that at runtime, or I could just make it easier for myself, which I have, is to have this data table that just does it, uh, and I don't have to do it manually every time. Um, and then, yeah, like this is the mode switching. Um, originally I had it as like a Boolean, so it'd be off and on, but you can see on here, this particles one, I've got three modes. I've got the off, I've got the swarm, and I've got the trails. So for a lot of these, I'll develop them further and say, oh, it can also do like this other thing um, rather than just like be an off or an on state. Um, because yeah, there's loads of variables that I can play with. Um, and then the other small change, I guess, is to look at this thing, the receiver. This is the the thing that just pulls in every single message that comes in, whether it's envelope, note on, note off, or an on off or whatever. Um, it pulls these in and then it just sends them and saves them to the various variables and then sends them to all of the um, the actors that have that uh, Blueprint interface. Um, and for those that don't know, a Blueprint interface allows you to kind of talk between Blueprints. So you can say this, well, here we go. You can see it in here, this interface is using the Blueprint interface, ask data, which is just a collection of uh, empty functions. And then it's up to me in each of the modules or the parent module to say what that implementation is. Um, but you just send the data. So for instance, this is sending the last note, the last velocity and the message in full, which means I can just grab that anywhere. Like I can use the envelope data, I can use the note data. I've just got that in whatever Blueprint that I need it to, to affect. Um, so yeah, it's 
kind of a load of work that they've done on the back end, but I've kind of cleaned it all up. Like it, it just makes things run a bit better. It makes it much easier to control. Uh, and then we get like, yeah, we get like a, a cool ability to control things. So yeah, I can be, uh, just play my Unreal project. Don't have to look at it. Everything is externally controlled. Uh, it doesn't matter which bit of the song I'm playing, it's going to affect it. And then I can like turn bits off and on. Uh, let's turn the bells on. Here we go. All the musical statues. There we go. And I just got these little musical statues. Boom. Let's come around again. I might turn them off this way. <laughs> There you go, coming down the background. And then we've also got like the distorter thing. Get the geometrics on again. Yeah. Another bit of story. Stop. Story. So yeah, the kind of like thinking behind a lot of this is there's a lot of like randomness involved. So everything's a bit different each time. So the story, you'll see like a few of them come up now. Um, all of these different elements of it can change. Uh, the story itself is just generated by ChatGPT every single time. Um, and it'll like continue the story. So you get this kind of like intrigue thing. Um, and yeah, like there's lots of like Things just will change every time. Obviously, the, like, the swarms, that's going to be like completely different every time. Um, let's just stop this a minute. Yeah, there we go. Uh, stop this. So that's it so far. Next steps really are to practice with it a bit, get my performance down. Um, the intention is to film this with like a sort of virtual production setting. Um, so I'm like in the in the world with all of the stuff happening around me. Um, I kind of want to improve the graphics a little bit, like they're okay. I've kind of played with lots of different versions. Um, there's maybe like 50% of the ones I've created I'm not using, I'm not really happy with. They just didn't really work or they weren't quite what I was imagining. Um, but a lot of them are looking really cool. I kind of want a bit more dynamism in the ones that I do have, like change them over time or have things affect things over time. Um, I think in reality, a lot of that can be faked. Like as much as I want this to be like super reactive to the sound, uh, having like some reactive and then some animation, you kind of in your head, like you, you attribute that to things regardless. Like there's a lot of things in there that are just animating over time because the note will come on and then go off. Like it feels like it was triggered by that, um, which is a super powerful effect. So I, I want to kind of allow for those little moments of, of just randomness to, to happen because they, they will over time. Um, but that is it for now. I don't think there's anything I've missed. Um, if you've got any questions, queries, like I'm more than happy to share this and answer questions. Like it's, I'm finding this like really fun learning a lot as we go. Uh, and it wouldn't be, uh, without all of the other resources that I have online to kind of help me develop this and take this further. So, uh, so yeah, that's it for now. Thanks. <laughs>